I'm excellent. Nice to meet you. Yeah, nice to meet you. So thanks for taking a minute up for Neon Jazz today. I appreciate it. Yeah, for sure. For sure. So before we delve into your debut, I want to know, you know, living through the last three and a half years with COVID's been quite a thing. And I'm curious as a musician, how did you survive that time period and how has it changed you? Yeah, so um, so COVID started in uh, 2020, right? So actually during that time, so I was kind of still recovering from my health issues. I was staying around here in, in uh, Oakland, California. And then um, but actually a little bit before then I, I applied for graduate school, which was really nice because then when COVID hit um, and the gigs kind of dried out and there weren't a lot of other opportunities, I started graduate school in uh, September of 2020. Um, and that, that, that was great. I started at, at the, um, my graduate school at Cal, Cal Arts, um, where I got my master's in music. And, and so the first year was all in Zoom. And um, yeah, I just took like tons of classes. And um, yeah, so, so I was doing that kind of full time. And then I was also working more on my album, um, composing. And so it was kind of a really like introverted um, time, just kind of waiting out the pandemic because I had to take it really seriously because of my um, health history. So, um, yeah, th th that's mostly what I was doing. Okay. So it must feel good now, not only is it your debut, but now as kind of the world opens up to, yeah. to have Seven Shades of Violet. How does this release feel? Yeah, it's great. Um, I've been working on it for a really long time. So, um, yeah, some of these compositions, actually one of them dates back to 2017, but then a lot of them started in like 2018 or 2019. Um, and then, yeah, it's just a huge process of... Um, Beginning the compositions and then trying to finish them and like arranging and rehearsing and then um, did like three separate tracking dates um, and then some overdub dates and then mixing, mastering and, and graphic design and everything like really took a huge amount of thought and time. So um, it, it's, it's just really great to finally get to the end um, after almost like five years now. So it's your debut, which is a big deal. It's your initial shout out into the music world. How did you artistically yeah. construct this album? Yeah, so I, I artistically constructed this album. Um, yeah, well, it was kind of a process. So um, yeah, so we actually did this, um, when I was applying to graduate school, we did this one session in 2019. We recorded um, Seven Shades of Violet, the song, and then um, Proxima Centauri. And so that, that was kind of the first studio date. And then um, that, that was with the, with my mentor, Jeff Denson, and bandmate Jeff Denson. And um, he runs Ridge Ray Records. So after that date, he actually um, offered to put these two songs on an, al on an album, my debut album, and to produce this album for me, um, you know, with about like 10 tracks. So th th that was kind of the goal. And so I kind of crafted this um, concept little by little. Um, where I, I wanted to create like an album um I, I really wanted to create like a big album like a really epic um really ambitious um project that's kind of my personality um and yeah so then i i, I kind of based it off of the song seven shades of violet which is a blues in seven four um and the harmony is like really um kind of more melancholy and um classical than a blues so I, I i called i used like violent instead of blues um yeah but so then i i cr kind of created this um concept w with, with that title and kind of just like with um like numbers in general because that, that's kind of what a lot of my music is based off of um with like odd meters and like these rhythmic things these really, really detailed like rhythmic structures so that, that's where like the numbers and kind of the math um comes about and then also like symmetry so the album is actually um it's like symmetrical in, in its um in its structure so there's 11 tracks and like right in the middle is um prince of darkness by wayne shorter um, which is the only standard on the album and then like kind of on either side of that there's um these original compositions where the key centers are kind of like symmetrically arranged so um the key center the key centers there's like an equal um assortment of key, cent key centers and it's kind of like a mirror image um yeah so that's kind of more about the the structure of the album so what are you hoping the listener gets from this album yeah well i hope the listener um well yeah well i i i hope that they um well i, re I really wanted to make a big impact and really the um 
to show an original voice. So, so I think what the listener could get is, um, first of all, they can get really different um, kind of style of jazz, really modern, really kind of pushing the envelope, um, taking a lot of risks and um, r really, really kind of new. I mean, I, I have contemporary influences, but, but really um, kind of really personal style of jazz. So um, I, I think they'll hear that. I think they're also will hear kind of how, how personal this album is from um, kind of from an, an emotional side of things. Um, where I was kind of writing this out of this really serious health um, issue that I had for a few years uh, with stage four lymphoma. Um, and so I think, I think they'll hear that and um, kind of the other themes of the album we're going to go into my Basque um, ancestry and kind of have these like programmatic things with history. Um, yeah, and then also I think, I think they'll just have a lot of fun and it's, it's a really wild ride through all these um, ambitious, um, but ambitious, but varied compositions and, um, and a few uh, covers. So talk to me a little bit about how this journey into jazz began for you. Where were you born and raised? How did you pick up an instrument and start this journey? Yeah, so um, I was born and raised in Oakland, California. I was actually born in uh, Berkeley, Berkeley, California, but I was raised in Oakland, California. Um, and I, I've kind of been around here all my life. I spent some time in LA to finish my master's program. But um, yeah, so I started piano at age five with Suzuki piano, and then I studied more serious like classical music. Um, and then in middle school, I kind of get into rock music and pop music, but then it's kind of like in, in high school that I got into jazz um like playing at in my high school groups and then also going to stanford jazz workshop um and really like after high school i got really serious and started practicing um a lot with jazz specifically and then i enrolled at the california jazz conservatory um, which is this new program dedicated only to the study of jazz music in uh, berkeley california um so i did the whole um I did the whole program there. I started the first year that they were accredited. And so I studied with um, Susan Muscarella and Edward Simon, who's a great um, pianist and composer. And then um, then after that, I had some health history. And then I, I finished my master's at CalArts in LA, where I studied with um, David Reutstein and Steve Lehman. And then also studied um, classical music and world music and uh, other forms of music. So what was the first live jazz show you ever saw that blew you away? Yeah. Um, hmm. I, I, I think really, really going to Stanford Jazz Workshop in um, 2010, I, I wasn't that developed of a player then. Um, people wouldn't really remember me from then, but um, that was really eye-opening because I, I never had seen um, like musicians my age like playing at a really high level and um also had never seen like jazz that close and um yeah we had this really um renowned pianist um junior mance um from the old generation i remember he was there he was already in his like 80s then um he performed and he, that that was really and it was really like this intensive experience um so i, I think that was kind of my first um experience kind of seeing the seriousness and and just the um yeah, the power of, of live jazz music and also just jazz musicians and their culture in general. So as you mentioned, just putting this album together and being a musician, there's so many working parts that go into it. What is it every day that you look forward to the most? What do you like the best about being a professional musician? Um, yeah. Um, I, I, I like the whole thing, but um, I, I think really like composition, that's kind of my... Um, that, that uh, that's that's a really special thing to me um because i I, th I think that really allows me to show my um my ideas and um and my voice it, playing does and improvising does too but i think composition is where i can really show my full um like strength as an individual thinker and i, I can really um craft a personal artistry um even though i, lo I love um, performing, improvising, and playing standards, and 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 whatever. But like really working with I these ideas from the ground up, and directing other musicians, 
and you know writing scores and um, notating parts and kind of new ideas um, and then mixing and overdubbing that, that's um, I think that's kind of my favorite part. So you had mentioned Junior Mance, you've mentioned Jeff Dents, and there's been others that you've mentioned, and I'm sure you've played around a lot of what we would consider legends and elders of jazz. What have they taught you, whether they've directly or indirectly, what have they taught you about being a musician and about being a part of the jazz community? Yeah. Um, yeah, I think they've all, um, they've all shown different sides. Um, really working with uh, Ed Simon was... Um, I think kind of the most eye-opening experience. Um, I studied with him for two and a half years, and um, he's the pianist in the SF Jazz Collective. And um, yeah, studying with him, um, yeah, it was a really magical experience because um, yeah, he would give me. Well, he was, he was really demanding and really pushed me really hard, um, and he was always honest and direct. Um, and he gave me lots of technical advice and. Um, yeah, and show me classical repertoire, and it, it, but but also like um, just being around him, and um, kind of being around his lifestyle, where he's like always on tour, um, always working on something new, and you know just kind of watching, um, even just learning that way, just kind of like um, observing kind of his lifestyle. Um, that that was really eye opening. Um, is he such a high level artist? Um, yeah, yeah, and 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 and, and, um, and he. And yeah, it's in, and he's played with so many people. Um, yeah, and then also like at Cal Arts, um, just being around that scene and the LA scene, and yeah, sitting with David Roystein and also with um, Steve Lehman and playing with um, Marvin Smitty Smith, and you know, just kind of seeing everyone's um, perspective on, um, and they all come from different generations, and you see all the different perspectives on, on. Um, on improvising and and uh, in the future of jazz, that, that was kind of like a, a big thing with Steve Lehman. He's kind of like a futurist. Um, yeah, just they're, they're they're and everyone has different rules and different perspectives. So it, it's just really great to see all that. Yeah, I've interviewed Edward a few times, and he's a fascinating okay. guy. Just yeah, it, it just emits off of him. It's a part of who he is. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, it's sure. totally cool. So very simply put, why do you love jazz? Um, I, I love jazz because, um, well, to me, like jazz is freedom. Um, I've, I've kind of thought about the definition of jazz and I, I think that that's kind of what I like the most. I, I think culture I might've said that I, I forget, but, um, but you know, jazz is freedom. And, um, I, I think that's really the, the best definition of it. Um, because it's freedom in, in all kind of aspects. Well, first of all, I mean, st styles of jazz there's there are styles of jazz which do have rules but even you know in the most conservative um kind of sense of jazz there, there's still once you get um in like when, once you get into the rules there's still freedom within that and the rules actually give you like more freedom um but, but then there's also freedom um yeah with with just how you, how you compose and how you run a band and it's really such a great um and direct way to express yourself both um, like long term, but then also in the moment. And every every show is different. And every every ensemble is different. Every configuration is different. Um, and you you grow and grow throughout your career. And you can really incorporate anything into your practice, whether it's classical music or world be, world music, um, electronic music. So it's just such a great and open um, community and practice. So let's say we get off the phone and a time machine pulls up in front of your house and you can go back in time and see any jazz musician anywhere. Where are you going? I, th I think I would probably, um, I would probably go see, um, Bud Powell probably. Okay. Um, yeah, he, he's kind of the first, um, well, I, I listened to Bill Evans a lot too when I was younger, but, um, he, Bud Powell was really, um, really important to my development and um he, he was really the first pianist to really incorporate bebop language on the on the instrument um and he had a pretty short life so i, I think I, i'd want to um go try to check out him playing like maybe in the late 40s early 50s like in in harlem um yeah maybe with with bird or with um yeah 
you know, you know, um, I, I think that would be a really magical experience. Um, so, Michael, every yeah. E yeah, for sure. So everyone out there has a perception of you, family, friends, fans. Yeah. But you ultimately run the show. What's your perception of you? Who do you think you are? Yeah. Um, well, I, 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 uh, I can consider myself a serious musician. Um, well, I consider myself a musician first, and then also a serious music musician. And um, yeah, I would say like music is really kind of my life. It's really my main, um, you know, all-encompassing pursuit <laughs> that I, that um, kind of runs everything in my life. It's my whole direction. Um, yeah, so I, I'd say like you know, music is always first. Um, you know, and then I'd, I'd say, um, yeah, I'm, I'm also, well, I also, um, in terms of personality, I have more um, kind of more introverted, more introspective kind of approach to music. Um, I love practicing. I love composing. I, I do love performing, too, uh, and just, you know, being around the community. But um, really kind of the centerpiece of my whole um, practice and my lifestyle is, is kind of kind of an introverted kind of based on like practicing and listening and um, composing that, that's really kind of the centerpiece of my like of my musical lifestyle so so the debut is seven shades of violet tell everyone out there the best place to go and get it any live shows you have or if anybody wants to dig into your history anymore where do they go yeah so um there's a few ways to buy it so it's available on cd on uh, amazon or other retailers like uh, Walmart, but um, Amazon has, has a good link for it. It's also available for digital download on um, Bandcamp and iTunes. And then it's also on all streaming platforms. Um, yes, yeah, so, so either either of the, and Bandcamp is actually the best for um, artists. It gives, you the most, it gives us the most uh, cut. Um, yeah, and then in terms of live shows, we're planning on some album release shows actually a little bit later like in um in january of 2024 and then we're gonna try to do a few dates out of town so we're we have um we have uh, eugene booked already and we're trying to book some more shows either like kind of in the northwest and then maybe we'll try to go um another kind of tour later in 2024 um yeah but and then also you can follow me on instagram or subscribe to my um, news newsletter on my website or uh, like my Facebook page. Right on, Michael, this has been great. Thank you so much for your story. Thanks for talking about your world of music and the album. Best of luck with everything. Great, thank you so much, Joe. Yeah, you bet. And